This is an Angzar, otherwise known as right angle with downward zigzag arrow. That nickname is actually a clever reference to how it's a right angle with a downward zigzag arrow. But here's a question. What does this symbol mean? A bad day on the stock market? Lightning hitting somebody's elbow? A snake slithering off a chair because you just asked it a really offensive question about snakes and ruined your whole dinner with this snake? Well, your guess is as good as mine because it turns out nobody knows. Okay, okay, I know that doesn't sound exciting. There are lots of symbols or combinations of symbols that don't seem to have any discernible meaning. But the Angzar is a little different. It's officially part of Unicode. This weird little guy has been programmed into nearly every single computer on Earth for decades, having been updated and carried over countless different times. But if no one seems to know what it means, then that raises a kind of strange question. Why is the symbol in your computer, and who put it there? Well, before I talk about how this character probably ended up in Unicode, I need to explain how Unicode works in the first place. Let's say you've just opened a text file on your computer, and for the sake of simplicity, let's say it's the half as interesting script I need to finish by the end of today, which currently just contains the letter L. You see, that file doesn't actually contain the L itself, the arrangement of pixels you see when you look at an L on your screen. That would make text files way bigger than they had to be. Instead, this text file contains a very short code that tells your computer to display the L that's sitting somewhere in its hard drive. Now, that seems simple enough, but this system used to have some pretty major problems. Up until the 1990s, computers made by different companies, running different operating systems, or displaying different languages had a lot of trouble reading each other's files. If the codes in one computer's database corresponded to different characters, then the text typed on one computer would show up as something completely different on the other. If you sent an email to your wife in Norway that said, I love you, my Norwegian wife, she might open it and see a file that says, I am wanted for manslaughter, also I do not love you anymore, and I want a divorce. Do not contact me or ask me any further questions about this email. Could that have actually happened? No, not really, but it gets the basic idea across, and that's what's important. This problem was eventually solved with the invention of Unicode, a totally universal character encoding system that encompassed pretty much every single writing system known to man, both old and new, with every extra symbol and bit of punctuation that might conceivably need to be used on a computer. This collection of 144,697 different characters is shared by every modern computer, and that collection includes this thing, the Angzar. So, okay, yada yada yada, boring nerd talk, every computer on Earth shares a common collection of symbols that no one accidentally divorces their Norwegian wife. But how exactly did the Angzar end up in this collection if no one knows what it means? Like, this is literally the most comprehensive and strictly maintained writing system in human history. It has its own consortium with members from Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and IBM, whose whole purpose is just to vote on stuff like whether upper right block diagonal lower middle left to lower right should be a real character. Apparently it is, and it has a whole reason to exist. So how did this thing slip through the cracks? Well, like most stupid questions, there was exactly one man on the internet who was wondering the same thing and did a crazy amount of research to figure out the answer. Good unpaid labor, Jonathan. Now, according to this guy's research, the Angsar was first proposed, along with a whole bunch of other characters, in this document. The whole thing was the work of an organization called the Styx Project, which was formed to regulate mathematical symbols. But the woman who actually documented the Angsar for them weighed in to say that even she had no idea what it meant when she put it in their registry. She got the symbol from a technical report put out by the International Standards Organization, which I can't actually show you because I'm not about to waste 198 of my precious Swiss francs on two seconds of this video. It's not entirely clear where the ISO originally sourced the symbol, but they seemingly pulled a lot of their characters from the now totally defunct Association for Font Information Interchange, who seemingly just let anyone register a symbol for five bucks. So there's pretty much no way of knowing why this symbol exists, unless you're the one cryptic dork who paid five bucks in the early 1990s to register right angle with downward zigzag arrow with the AFII. If that happens to be you, please don't comment below with the answer because that would ruin the whole video. Of course, there are some pretty good theories as to what the Angzar might actually mean, or at least kind of mean. Electricians have pointed out, for example, that the downward zigzag arrow is used in other electrical symbols to indicate a short circuit. Some mathematicians have noted that in their field, the downward zigzag arrow means that there is a logical contradiction of some kind, and other mathematicians have speculated that it might refer to a graph whose y-axis continues below its x-axis. Certain annoying people with no particular expertise at all have observed that the Angzar looks a whole lot like this ancient chaos magic sigil, even though this ancient chaos magic sigil was invented in 2004 and didn't exist when the Angzar was added to Unicode. But really, the the beauty of this symbol is that it has no meaning. It's an empty vessel for us to create our own meanings. You can use it for anything. It could be an enticing pickup line on a dating app, or a cryptic way of telling your landlord that you aren't going to pay rent that month. Maybe you could even use it as a way of saying, hey Sam, good video. I enjoyed watching that video. And I'm even going to sit through the whole ad at the end just to be nice.
In exchange for your kindness, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Learning hard things is hard, and doing hard things is hard, except when it isn't. Brilliant makes it easy to learn hard things, which is great because then you can know things that other people had to work hard to learn. They have these interactive lessons that are based on teaching you small, intuitive principles, then slowly building them up into the bigger concepts. That way you can start a course by using an artificial neuron to deduce where a cat likes and doesn't like to be scratched, and finish with a full introductory understanding of how neural networks function. Brilliant has really focused on creating the best way to learn complex STEM subjects online so that your lifelong independent learning doesn't need to be confined to more abstract subjects. It can include hard sciences too. Better yet, Brilliant lets you learn on your own terms, allowing you to take on as much or as little at once on your smartphone or computer. Best of all, to get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash HAI or click the button on screen, and the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.